Hello from wherever you are, and welcome to Let's Play Games. I'm John McFarlane, Adult Services Librarian for National Public Libraries, and I hope you'll join me in learning or rediscovering some of the more common and uncommon games out there. Today, I've previously covered in earlier episodes the Italian-themed card deck. I want to bring it out today and show you a kind of fun mix of game that reminds you of Go Fish, but adds a certain little flair to it. Let's get stuck in. So the game I'm doing today, Scopa, involves a slightly different card deck than you may be used to. This is an Italian themed card deck, which takes out specifically here the eight and the nine. So we have some of the traditional court cards remaining, but we do a little bit of skipping. Now, you're probably familiar with uh, other suited card decks, especially if you're familiar with any sort of a tarot looking kind of deck, you're gonna find that it looks oddly familiar. So we have here the wands, the cups, the swords, and the coins. So these are some fun decks to use and you can do it actually with um, anything that involves like the spades, the hearts, the diamonds and the clubs, that is a French suited deck. So the game we're gonna to do today, all you have to do for this is actually just take out the eight and the nine. You can still make it work. So we have, and I'm just gonna go ahead and lay everything out here. Uh, there is no queen card. I'll make sure to point that out when that does occur because it happens actually fairly often. So instead we have the king, we have the knight, and we have the page, or what used to be also called a squire card. And notice how all of these on the pip side of things are gonna be just easy enough to keep track and in order and have some more interesting designs to them. Hence why I wanted to bring these out of the closet today. Uh, in this game, uh, you typically don't have to, whoop, switch that one. You don't have to worry about whether something is upright or reversed. That's not the kind of game we're playing today. We may be playing that in future though. So we're just gonna go through all of this and notice how it's a pretty easy layout for this game. Uh, the eight and the nine. So think of this as the Jack, Queen and King. Same principle applies here. So actually, sorry, we're gonna take out the eight, nine and 10. So that way we've got more than enough to work with. We have our court cards. So what's the object of this game? Scopa is similar to, uh, think of a mix of capturing games. Uh, Go Fish is kind of oddly remnant as a basic here. But if you've seen our previous episode on Hanafuda, it's gonna seem awfully familiar because we're trying to capture. The biggest difference here is that the capture will be more on the field than it will be anywhere else. So what I'm gonna do is all of this is gonna be compiled together. We're gonna go ahead and work on shuffling this up. And uh, as always, I make sure to remind people of the proper way to shuffle. So make sure these cards are flat, fairly easy enough. You're gonna do what's called cutting the deck and you're just going to make two convenient little piles here. You're gonna hold and you're gonna use your thumb right here and you're just gonna let some cards slowly. See how it mixes, goes in together. And then usually you do it at least a couple of times. There's consistent debate as to how many it requires to constitute a good shuffle. Always up for debate. I like doing seven because there has been some math done out there that says a seven is the technical optimal. So we're just gonna go by that and make it work here. And notice that the cards look different than probably what you're used to, but there are some fun design cards. So all we're gonna do here is, uh, this game actually kind of subverts one of my favorite notions. Uh, usually in most Western style card games, things go clockwise. The deal here is actually gonna go 
counterclockwise, more like Eastern style card games. So what's gonna happen is each player, I'm gonna have four players here, and we're gonna give three cards to each player. We're also going to have four cards in the middle. That will be kind of our field or pond if you wanna make some go fish kind of references. So we're gonna do that, one. I'm just going to deal here, two. Put another one, three. All right. So I'm gonna put this stack over here. Uh, it's typically referred to as a stock, actually. And we're gonna go ahead and flip over here. So we have some fives going on. Uh, so we've got five of cups, five of swords, one of coins, and the two of swords. Like I said, upright, reverse, does not matter here. So the object of the game here is gonna be using the cards that you have in order to sweep, scopa, sweep, off the table by collecting the values. How do you have that value? Well, let's look at what cards I dealt myself. I've got a five of clubs, I've got a seven of swords, and I have a knave of wands. So what I can do is I can capture cards that will be allocated for points in the game. What I have to do is make sure that things add up. So notice the five here. I can capture this five and this five, but I can't do anything over here simply because it doesn't add up. And an important rule here, you must try and capture something. If you can theoretically capture with, you must capture with. That's the important part here. Now, let's see what we've got here. We've also got the six. Uh, we've got two sixes and a four. From here, we've got a fair amount to work with because, for example, on the sixes, the five and the one, you can make it add up together so you can capture more cards at once, leaving a little bit less for other people. And we've got the 10, we've got the 11, we've got the seven. Uh, and then we've got a 12, a five, and a seven here. This is a pretty simple, basic deal layout. So what I'm gonna do here is, give me one second, I'm gonna check on one piece of notation here, and then we'll start playing. One second. So now, I do want to point out something about the cards. Notice we have the 10 here, we've got an 11 here, and a 12 here. This can sometimes play in a lot for certain games. For this game, what we're gonna do is we're gonna treat the knave as an eight, the knight as a nine, and the king as a 10. Because we're looking for the point values here, what's gonna really matter is having these small numbers about. Now, we're gonna do this in a more simplistic way and just capture cards, go through a simple round, and then I'll add some scores and complexity later to it because this is where things can scale. Points-wise, we're actually only going to 11 points. How do you score one of these points? Capturing the most cards in a round is worth a point. Um, there's certain little bonuses. Capturing the most number of coins in a round is worth one point. So there's little ways to add up your score. Uh, notice, for example, this person has two coins right off the bat. They're in a good position to try and go after some of these. So since I dealt with uh, the player to my right first, we're gonna stay counterclockwise. So they've got two sixes and they've got a four. Now they're gonna decide what to capture here, and it has to add up to the value on the card. If you don't, by the way, you will be, much like in the way that Hanafuda works, you have to place something on the table. So you can actually lose cards over the course of the game. This will inevitably happen. So uh, we're gonna take our six here, and I'm gonna take this five and this one off of the table and they're gonna just place these right here. So now we have the seven, the 11, and the 10. What we're gonna do is the seven's available, and we're gonna take all of these 
off. Notice that capturing happens pretty quickly over here. What are we doing now? We are going to actually redeal these four to leave stuff on the table. Now you can play it one of two ways. You can either kind of force the person over here to lay something down because they can't capture anything, or you can deal like this. For the simplicity of teaching this game, I wanna go with this first. So now we've got what is a nine and a 10 and a six and a one. So we've got a 10 here, uh, we've got a five here, which won't be able to really capture anything yet. We have a seven here, we can capture the six and the one. But for now, because it's really hard to add stuff up to 10, we're gonna just capture these two right here. And then we're gonna move over to this player here. All right, this is our eight card, that's nine. Um, since I can't really do too much here, I'm gonna take the seven, do the six, and the one. Mostly to highlight that now, notice we can't add anything up, so the player is going to discard something. They're gonna discard this six. Play can then move to the next person who can capture. Now, we can't do anything here, so they're gonna get rid of the five. This person can capture the five, and you're trying to go out, relativistic speaking, as fast as possible. I can't do anything, so you're gonna go here, and then you're gonna go in one big circle here for a moment. So a six and a four, um, that is only. I uh, can't capture this, so you, at this point you get a seven, and then one person basically can play. So this in a very rudimentary way is how to play this game and you're gonna pass the dealer. So uh, we'll do, you're gonna do three new cards and the game continues until this stock here is expired. So notice we still have a couple more cards to deal with. So we'll just keep on going. We've got our knave, knight and one. And notice we immediately have stock to roll with on the table, which means the play will continue on. This is part of the way the game develops over time and has a lot of replay value because every game is definitely gonna be different. So let's see here, we've got six that can be captured. And actually I noticed this king here, which can capture the six and the four. Now, this player opposite me is gonna have a really good deal at this point, and you can just put them all together. They're less, uh, in other games that we have tricks where you're stealing groups, uh, this is just simple rudimentary calculating math. So we've got a seven here, and that does deplete the stock. And so we're just gonna go ahead and replenish that. And this way we can kind of go through the game fairly quickly, and then I can get to scoring and adding stuff in later. Right, now we've got, an eight, a nine, and a one. So let's see here. And yes, it does add up. All you're doing is chaining to figure out how you can get these scores in higher. So three, three, and a two. I'm gonna take, since this is a nine, that's three, that's four, that's two. Now this person has a three. Stock's kind of depleted again. And we're just gonna go ahead and put these last four on the table. This person is a matching two. Uh, they have a one here and they have this eight here. So they've got the two fours. Uh, they don't have anything to play, so they're gonna just put this one. They're gonna have this one. So now we've got a nine on the field, a three and a one. Same for this person, the six. And you're just gonna get rid of as many of the cards as possible. There will be some left over. So when somebody can't play any longer, that is when play is gonna pass. That'll be the end of the round. Can't do anything here because the 10, we're adding up to nine, this is eight or sorry, this is 10, this is nine, this is eight. So this is a 
pretty rapid fire round, but this is how the game scales and develops quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, we're gonna put these cards off to the side and then our stock will be kind of kept out. And now we're gonna lay out and figure out scoring here because that is one of the only remaining things going on. So one second, I'll get this set up and then I'll show you what the scores are. So now let's talk about scoring. One point is going to be for the most cards captured. Uh, so I just double checked the rule book just to make sure on my end that I was being correct on this. Uh, the remaining hand, once you're done, actually goes to the player who last went out. So for the purposes of this, I gave it to the player on my immediate left. Notice that I had 11 captured over the course of that, and with giving those last cards, instead of me getting the point for most captured, the person to my left does, because they have 12. You also get a point every time you do one of those sweeps. So for the purposes of this, I think there were three sweeps when we dealt. So let's give it one each. Uh, this person's already getting a point. So everyone gets points this round, for an example. Uh, but every time you sweep, you get a point. The most number of captured is a point. The most number of coins is a point. So we're gonna look up here. We're gonna have one, two. So they have to beat two, one. They can't, so two's the one to beat. Uh, so we have one, two. So nothing else doing there. So in theory, if you tie on something, no point is awarded. So. There occasionally will be ties, and this does keep the game going on longer. Meanwhile, over here, uh, they're already getting the point for most captured. They're also going to get the most coins because we've got one, two, three, four, five of those coins. From here, you're going to just keep allocating the points. Um, so we've got one for most cards, two for most coins. Everyone else had a sweep. There's also one last little point, something pretty high value. So I'm gonna redeal and show you one last round with a bit more strategic playing involved. The seven of coins here, that is worth one point on its own. Remember, we're playing to 11. Um, from here, this person has about four points right off the get-go of just winning this hand. But it is always a single, player experience, a more competitive one. So let's go ahead and get everything organized and we'll do one more quick round so I can bring certain concepts back. So as always, we're just gonna get ready and shuffle. And in just one second, I'll have everything shuffled out and we'll go again. All right, so now we're back. I made myself dealer again, and I totally forgot to include these two cards as well. So this will be a little special inclusion. Always remember to collect your cards. So we're gonna keep this little goof in for you as a reminder. Always collect all of your cards, place them in randomly. So I have, remember these 11s are functioning as the eight, nine, 10. So this will be the 9.1, we have these Knaves here, which are the nine, and then the king one, which is a 10. We're collecting for specific points. You can combine them. So we're gonna go here. They've got a two, a five, and a seven. Not the seven of coins that's worth a single point. We have a five and a two. Notice here, remember you get a point for the most coins captured. In that last round, five was enough. I don't have any coins in my hand. Obviously you don't know what everyone else has in their hand. So you're gonna take the seven, you're gonna capture the five and the two. So now you can play with a bit more strategy in how you're trying to make things work. A three and a two, so you cannot capture anything. Now you have to do, now you have to make a decision as to what you're gonna actually discard because 
you can leave that king on there, which is worth 10, somebody else is gonna have to play their king. It's early in the game, and it's highly likely that someone is about to have a king. One of the other important parts is knowing what's already been captured, what's left. Especially since this is a smaller deck, it's a little bit easier to remember. So I'm just gonna go ahead and toss this seven down here. It's a bit more likely that I can later come back here and add up to 10 or add up to eight. For example, the seven and the three here will add up to 10. It won't get all the way back to that player, but we've at least something to build off of. So we've got a three, uh, we've got a king, and they're gonna go ahead and do just that. They're gonna take the three and the seven here, claim it for their own. Now we're back to here. Uh, this person doesn't have anything to play with, so they're gonna do six on the field. They can at least capture a two right here. So the player to my right is definitely starting off strong. Now we've come across where there's only so much you can do here. Uh, you got a one. Now I've got this nine here. I can't capture that, so. This is where the game becomes more forced. You're having to put stuff out on the field that you normally wouldn't have had to. Now you know that you can go out this way and we'll, the next time we get to somebody with no card, we're gonna be able to just start pretty fresh. So now we've got this. So everyone, we've depleted the stock and we are going to deal back out. So eventually enough will be on the field that something can be captured. You notice at the end of that last round, we had inevitably only a couple of cards remaining. And the seven of coins has come out. This is where in that headspace, the person has now gotten this deal. If the seven had been on the field at all, you would have absolutely run into a situation where somebody would have tried to immediately claim that. So uh, this was the next person to deal with a card. So they've got what is eight, a six, and a six. Uh, I'm go ahead and take another one of those coins. They're already doing pretty strong this round, but trying to seal up that coin. We have a three, a six, and a nine. I can go ahead and take this nine right here. Notice how it does scale fairly quickly. We've got seven, eight, and three. They'd really love to match the seven right now. Um, but the eight can be done with the three and the five. And this three can remain a throwaway card. This person doesn't have a six. I'm gonna drop that four. This person's gonna capture the six. So safe assumption that this person's probably winning a couple points this round. They're gonna drop a three. This person can at least do a three. They're kind of holding on to the seven and really hoping that something can drop their way in a moment. No choice, you gotta leave a king out in the field. Uh, that can't match here, so the six. This person can capture. Now they have no choice but to drop the seven. So this becomes a playable option. Some kings are here. So it'll be a little easier here to redeal and get everything kind of reset here just because sometimes the table can get a little crowded. So I went ahead and redealt uh, because that seven of coins really changed the complexion of where things are at. Obviously, you kind of know that the total coins is out of play because of what this person has dropped. Knowing what's been played and what's been captured really helps matters. Uh, you know, and we know, that there's one card left in the stock, which is the six of coins. So this is gonna be off the field, but in your head, you know that two kings have been captured. These are staying on here, unless you can add up to 10. And realistically, you're not gonna be able to add to 10 with what's in your hand. It's the reverse of what works. This will happen sometimes. Uh, this is also why when three or four kings show up in this first drop, you're gonna redeal. It's just easier and the traditional rules do have it because otherwise you can't capture anything that's in the center area. 
So we'll continue off with here. Uh, that way there can be some sort of capture. And actually we can do four, two, one. That adds up to seven. This person will go out. And from here, you're actually just gonna go ahead and we'll give them this last card to make it a little easier for play to continue and everything to finish out. Uh, there's a four that can be captured here, another coin. We've got five and a four and a seven and a four, seven and a five. They can't do any of it. So that four is gonna come down here. This person thankfully has a knight. So they're at least gonna be able to get one of these. This person can't, so the six comes out, but the five and the one come out. And from here, when you definitively go out like that, you're gonna get those remaining cards. These are just gonna be out of play. So let's go ahead and score real quick. I did not do great, but I at least got that one point pivoted hard for the seven of coins. This person has one coin, two coins. So two coins and one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So 11 cards overall, not bad. Any coins here? One coin, two coins. Now we obviously, as the watchers do know that somebody's gonna be able to beat that, but it is that moment where, okay, two, in theory, if they didn't have that many coins, no one would get the point for it. But we know very well that, we're gonna go ahead and take these coins out of the matter. That they have one, two, three, four, five. So they definitely have the point for most coins at one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So 15 cards captured, which means they're also gonna get the point for the most cards captured. They're gonna get the point for the most coins. And they're also going to, they got a couple of the sweeps. Uh, just keeping track of getting that point when you can sweep off the table is really important. When they wiped out the last cards in the stack, they got that point while also getting the coins as well. This is a really good hand for the player on my right. But this in a simplistic way is the classic Italian game of Scopa. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Join us next time as we go into another card game with a little fun flair to it. Be sure to check out some of the other great NPL Universe content on the National Public Library YouTube page and also airing on the NECAT network. I'll see you next time.